Hello everybody, this is Anthony Radzikavich. I'm the new Linux instructor over at Gateway Community College. I am going to create a video for you guys to uh, cover one of the first things that we'll go over in class, which is installing Linux in my book, a required book, uh, LPIC1, CompTIA Linux Plus Certification by Rob Tracy. It's actually the fifth chapter in this book. Uh, so we'll have a lot of items to cover to understanding exactly uh, what's going on inside of Linux, the command line, etc. Uh, but in order to play with Linux, you have to have Linux available. So this is one of the first things that we'll do. Uh, if you are interested in my course, I will be teaching in summer, again at Gateway Community College, which is located on 40th Street in Washington. My class number is 18241, as specified right here. And it will be uh, Mondays and Wednesdays from 6 to 8.30. Now, you will have eight weeks to complete this course, so it won't be crunched down to the five weeks that normal summer classes are. Uh, so don't worry about feeling pressured to uh, rush things or that you'll lose uh, important materials uh, or important information regarding uh, Linux. So let's get started. What we're going to be using in class, or at least what I'll be using, is VMware Player. You can download that from the VMware site, and I can just go ahead and show you that really quick. Uh, VMware.com, and we'll wait for that to load. Okay, so when you go into VMware.com, and you hover over downloads, don't click on it. I messed up on this a lot of times, so it's really confusing if you click on it. But if you hover over it, and you see where it says free product downloads, just click player. Once that loads, you'll have this option here, VMware Player and VMware Player Plus for Windows, if you're using a Windows machine. If you're already using a Linux machine, then don't worry about anything that I'm showing you on Virtual Machine. If you want to install Linux uh, on your actual computer, I would be more than happy to just grade your work, look it over on your physical machine. Just remember that you're going to have to stay with me a little bit after class so I can look that over. Either way, if you click download here, run it as a normal installation file, you'll be good to go. It is free, so don't worry about paying for VMware you, or player. You can play, pay for VMware Workstation. You can pay for the cloud services. But for this class and these purposes, I would not recommend paying for it unless you really, really feel the desire and the need to do so. Uh, so now that we have that covered, when you do start it, it's going to look a lot like this. Ah. I do have a test in here, and I also have uh, another run of OpenSUSE 13.1, which is what we're going to download. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to remove those so we can go over how to do this step by step from the very beginning. Uh, yes, okay, okay. Great. So one of the first things to do besides getting VMware Player is to download a Linux file. Uh, you want the operating system, usually in an ISO. It's the easiest way to go. And what we will be using in class is OpenSUSE. Whoops, that's a .org. So if you go to OpenSUSE.org, you can click on this Get It. Now you have different file formats, like a or not really file formats. You have different computer architectures for the processor. You have a 32-bit, you have a 64-bit. So please make sure on your own um, to check which type of uh, operating system you have. The way that you could do that is if you click Start and in the programs type in MS for Microsoft Info 32 and you'll see this msinfo32.exe. This is just one of the ways to check it. This is a good way to check the RAM, check the processor type, etc., so on and so forth. Uh, I'm running a 64-bit uh, processor, and I have 3 gigs of RAM in my machine. However, since I'm running a virtual machine, I'm going to just go ahead and download the 32-bit, and I did this direct link. This direct link download took me on my laptop over Wi-Fi about three hours. So if you have a hard link connection, it's going to go much quicker for you. Or if you know how to do torrenting, uh, that will probably be the quickest way to go since you're going to be grabbing it from a lot of different machines. Either way, it's very simple. I did direct link, 32-bit, and I download. 
Now, when you download, you're obviously going to want to save this somewhere and make sure you remember where that saves. The default location that you can go to, if you go to computer, is downloads right here. However, I did save mine in a specified path, and of course, I'm not going to make you wait three hours while I download mine. So, now that we have that finished, if you want to do this uh, from a disk and you want to reimage your whole computer or you just want to create yourself a Linux disk, I would suggest using CD Burner XP. It's a very reliable tool. I use it for work, I use it for uh, my personal projects, and it's really never done me any wrong. I've used other tools where it's not as intuitive to do it. Um, and I can also put the download link upon request, or if you have any troubles installing VMware or CD Burner XP, uh, you know, the steps that I'm not going over here, please let me know, and I can also create another video for that, or at least just walk you through it. So, we've started VMware Player. We have our Linux distribution. It's OpenSUSE 13.1. If you would like to use a different one, that's fine by me, just as long as you can do the same exact things that we're doing in class. Uh, so what we're going to do is create a new virtual machine, and this is a little bit tricky on what I want you to do for this virtual machine. I've had some issues with VMware Player just because what it'll do is if you install it from the ISO directly, it'll find an auto install and it'll just go and bypass everything that we want to do, like the nitpicky kinds of things that I'm going to have you do. Uh, and it just automatically goes. Well, when it did that for me, it skipped the root, it skipped the swap file system, it didn't mount any of my drives. It was a really big problem for me. So what we're going to do is it says install from installer disk. If you have a DVD, you can definitely do that, but I do suggest doing it this way to start. Uh, installer disk image file, which is ISO you downloaded. You can do it directly from your computer, or I will install the operating system later. Please, please, please choose this one. It's going to save you a lot of time if you have any issues with it. The guest operating system is Linux, and the version is OpenSUSE. You can choose that from the drop-down menu here. Now notice we have OpenSUSE and we have OpenSUSE 64-bit. Since I did OpenSUSE 32-bit, I'm just gonna choose my OpenSUSE. So click Next. The virtual machine name, you can name this whatever you want. If you wanna name it, you know, Penguins take over, that's perfectly fine. I'm just going to name mine to what it is, OpenSUSE 13.1. And please note the location. This is in my documents, Virtual Machine, OpenSUSE 13.1. Click Next. The book suggests that you at least have 16 gigs in virtual machine space. I would like you guys to try to do 30. If you can manage 30, that would be the optimal way to go. Uh, so that gives us more room, so if you wanted to do extra partitions, or you wanted to do a backup from another drive, or you wanted to explore different capacities that Linux has to offer, it's going to allow you the extra space. Not necessarily everything that we'll do in class uh, will take up all of this space, but trust me, I'll offer plenty of extra credit to you guys. So if you have the extra space, please utilize it. 30 gigabytes is not that much anymore. Uh, so... It also asks store virtual disk as a single file or split virtual disk into multiple files. The multiple files is going to reduce your performance a little bit, but it's very important for me that you do this, or at least if you're going to do it as a single file, have it on a really large flash drive. Again, please try to make it over 30 gigs or uh, external hard drive so that you can get it to me. Remember, I'm going to have to take these. I'd like to take these home to be able to grade them unless you're working on a physical machine. If you're working on a physical machine, then I'll have to grade it in class. So this, when you split it into smaller files, separate files, it's going to be much easier to transfer back and forth. And something else that I do want to note, I'm going to go back for a second. Notice this location, and I mentioned you can install this on a very, very large USB or you can install it on an external hard drive. All you have to do is press browse, navigate to exactly where you want it, and remember that path so you can get me those files. So have this finished, have this finished, next. And here is the main uh, attributes of your system. Really, you don't have to worry about most of this stuff. I am going to have you worry about your memory, and that's about it. But for now, we're going to click finish. And voila, there it is. So what I'm going to do is now that it's highlighted, click Edit Virtual Machine Settings here. 
And this is where we're going to change that RAM setting. So the memory is at 768. I'm just going to ask that you bump that up to a gig or 1024 megabytes. Now, there's another really important thing that we need to do, and that would be in the CD DVD IDE, it says auto detect. Now it's using a physical drive and auto detecting that. You can do that, but we're using an ISO image to boot from. So when we use ISO image file, we'll find that. Remember when I said you had to remember exactly where you saved that file? Well, here's where it comes into play. So mine, I saved in Gateway, Instruction, Linux, and here it is. Now I have two different versions. I'm going to do the most updated one, 13.1. And something to note, when you go over in the chapter, you'll see this, the i586. When it has the i586, that means it's a 32-bit. So the 64-bit, if you try downloading 64 and it doesn't have that i586, that mean, or it does have that i586, sorry I misspoke, um, it means that you downloaded the 32-bit really. But now that we have that ISO image file loaded into here, go ahead and this is one gig, one process is fine, we'll just press OK, and we're good to go. So there are two places we can play the virtual machine. We can play it here, or even easier, we can play it here, and that's going to power it on and boot up from that ISO image. So it works just like a computer starting up. If you had the DVD, this is exactly what you would see in your actual computer. You can boot from the hard disk, of course. Uh, I've left my DVD in my computer, and it's done this every time, so it doesn't want to do an installation right away. So what I'm going to do here is just make sure you click inside your virtual machine. You notice my uh, hand cursor went away. I clicked inside my virtual machine, and then use the arrow keys to navigate. Uh, if you want to check your installation media to make sure that the DVD is okay or the ISO file is okay, you're more than free to do that. You can check your firmware and you can also check your memory to see if your memory is okay. But since this is a virtual machine, you should be good to go. So, we're going to go to Installation, press Enter, and it's going to load the Linux kernel. Let's give it a little bit of time. One of the things about uh, installing operating systems, in case you have never done one before, is patience. They do take a little bit of time to get through. All right, and here our installation is loading up. Okay, now that it's finished loading that part, you see it's just loading some things that belong to the operating system into that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, remind me later on this. That's up to you if you want to do that. I'm not going to do it right now because that is a VMware uh, related thing, not the Linux related thing. So of course you have your EULA, the license agreement. You're more than free to read all over this uh, as far as what it is, what to do. As you see, it's really not that long, but I'm not going to go ahead and do that right now. Uh, you can do that if you have the time. So just push next. You notice probing on the system here for any USB, firewire, floppy drives, hard drives. It's looking for all of my hardware to be able to install very easily, very quickly. Uh, so one of the things that people were afraid of is, oh, Linux is something that, uh, you know, you need to add every single thing. Well, they've made Linux very easy to install at this point. Most of it will do it by itself. So, we are going to deselect the automatic configuration. We're not going to install any add-on products from a separate media, and we're not going to add any online repositories either. So, new installation, uncheck the use automatic configuration. Now, the clock and time zone, we're located in Phoenix. And one thing here is deselect that hardware clock set to UTC. Uh, because your hardware clock probably isn't set to that. Uh, if the time is incorrect here, which it's not on my side, you're more than free to change it by clicking change. We'll just wait. And you can change it man manually here. We also have a network time protocol, but we are not using that at this moment. So just do a manual setting for this time. And I'm going to cancel that because I didn't want to change it. Click next. Uh, you selected local time, but only Linux seems to be installed in your system. Set to UTC. 
as I told you, don't worry about this. Just go ahead and continue. Now, the graphical desktop that we will be using is the GNOME desktop, or at least that's the one that I'm going to install. If you'd like to use KDE or you did find another one you'd like to use, uh, feel more than free. It will look a little bit different, but uh, really, when you get into the command line, it doesn't matter what desktop you use. Uh, it's just we're going to go with GNOME. Click Next. Ah, now this is where it's going to get uh, interesting. You notice it created the swap file, it created a root volume, and then it created the partition for the actual hard drive itself for home. We're going to create our partition setup manually. So every single thing we're going to do, we're going to do manually. We are going to, for experts, because that's what we're striving to become, we're going to do the custom partitioning. Click Next, and let's walk through all of this. You see Linux is here. If we had any RAID devices, volume management, we could crypt files. Well, we have don't have anything done yet, but I do want you to notice you can do that. You can build very secure systems and you can go through this really easy to use interface once you learn how to do it. So the hard disk is here. This is SDA. Now when you read the book, you'll notice there's HDA and SDA. SDA just means that it's using a SATA connector, not a PATA connector. Uh, so in this, we will click Add and Primary Partition and select Next. The custom size, and I want this to be 100 megabytes. So click Next. And we're going to make this partition here the boot partition. So the boot partition really doesn't need to be uh, that large. We're going to use ext4 and the mount partition here is boot. When we're finished with that we will click finish and we need to add another partition so we'll click add again. A primary partition select next and in the custom size we're going to change this to 2 gigabytes. Click next and this, we are going to make our swap file. So this one's a little bit different. Uh, most of the partitions, you can root them. This is root, home, variable, you know, all these different uh, areas for using the hard drive. But the swap file, what that is, is it's like the paging file in Microsoft. It's virtual RAM. It's virtual memory. So. Uh, since I have one gigabyte of RAM installed, I'm going to choose two gigabytes of swap file space. And that's going to help my uh, computer process certain things as far as the memory is concerned. Select Finish. And we still need to keep adding, so we're going to add another primary partition. And this one we want to make eight gigabytes. So let's change this to eight. Select Next. We want the ext4 to be done and we want this to be the root so the root is just that uh, forward slash there we will click finish we're going to add another primary partition and this one we want again ext4 oh sorry but we want ext4 and we're going to make this our variable file so let's see it's three gigabytes that we want here Next, again, next, there we go. All right, and this one we want our forward slash there, done. So let's see, we're going to accept this. And notice all of our changes are up here. We have two gigabytes for swap, we have eight gigabytes for our root, and we have four, or three gigabytes, sorry, uh, for our variables. So click next, oh, there we go. There we go, enter the user's full name. And the user's full name is, of course, Tux Penguin. And the username will just be Tux. Now the password in the book, and I'll use the same for my system, is capital M three L I N U X all lowercase two seven three. And then it wants you to confirm that, so please just make sure you type that in again. Uh, you can make this whatever you want, but it will make my life a little bit easier if you do keep it all the same. Uh, so let's see, we are going to check, use this password for systems administrator, as you see here. 
we're going to uncheck the other two boxes for automatic login and receive system mail. Now notice also it does have a password encryption method and it gives that to you as well. You can do some research on that if you want to find out a little bit more. We will discuss these things in class as well, uh, but encryption, decryption is a very interesting topic and it's a whole entire career field. Linux is very good uh, to get into if you want to learn about those kinds of things as well. So click next and here we are installation settings. Here's our partitioning, our bootings using the loader of Grub2. Uh, we have software. Yast is yet another setup tool. Um, so that's that's definitely software oriented. And we have our locale settings, time settings, user settings, and default run level. Uh, you'll learn about the default run level later on. Oh, there's and then the system, which is our VMware that we're using. Installation from images uh, is enabled. You can disable that if you want to. Just I would leave it. Uh, firewall and SSH are uh, enabled, so don't disable this if you want a secure system. Um, we will work with some of these things in the course, though. Uh, so I'll show you how to disable it, enable it within. Linux itself. One of the things that we do want to do though is select the software here. So if I wanted to change anything here I could just click on that header area and in the software under development, let me find it here, development, we want to mark C forward slash C plus plus development. So where we're gonna find that is right here. I'm gonna check that and select the details. So in the details of all of these, we're going to get a lot more options. Uh, we're going to highlight games in the left. So instead of installing all of the games here, you notice it had this check, but there are a ton of other games here that you can choose from. Feel more than free to install as many as you want. Just don't make it take over your system. You know, uh, keep it reasonable. But there are a lot of cool games like, hey, Frozen Bubbles here. Uh, either way, the one that we do want to install is CS Smash. Select Accept. It says, hey, do you want to do that? Automatic changes? Yeah, go ahead. Continue. All right. So everything looks good here. The only thing that I wanted to change was software and everything else. Just please leave the same. We did configure everything before and click install. All right, confirm the installation. Yep, click install again. And this is the one where your patience is really needed. So this will take some time. Again, another reason why I'm putting this video out there is so you can have this finished if you want to do it before your class starts. We'll do this in class uh, together. However, you know, maybe that day you'll leave early or you could even work on some extra credit that I'll offer you. So I'll offer a lot of extra credit right away. All right, well, I'm going to step away from this so I can get a few other things done because there's no sense in just waiting around for this to finish. And while this is going on in the class, don't worry. If we're all on the same page, we'll be looking into other things or talking about what Linux really is. Okay, uh, now that the installation is finished, the reboot came up. Here, said uh, it will reboot, and it did. All right, and here it is loading up again. And this one will take a little time as well, so don't worry if it is slow as it is now. All right, and now here we are. It's preparing the initial system configuration. Some of the things that it'll ask for, host name, domain name, uh, ask about uh, how you're gonna get your IP, ask about the firewall. Um, you know, we'll, we'll go over every, every single aspect of this. And there we are. So under the host name, I'm going to put WS1. I'm going to deselect the change hostname via DHCP. 
Uh, why not? Let's just uh, make one up. We'll just call it Linux Team. Next. There we are. So, just capital Linux, capital Team, and just put that in, because maybe we can interconnect our workstations. We'll have to see with our IT department uh, if that is a possibility. But honestly, uh, we could set up many other virtual machines within your machine and you could do this just within your own computer as well so you can look at setting up domains and all these other aspects as we configure different types of servers and networking installations of uh, programs that could also be found to control this so what we're going to do is under now that this is loaded is under firewall select open to unblock your SSH port so SSH port is blocked we want to open that so remember before as I was saying hey you could disable your firewall by clicking this it's just as easy as clicking that hyperlink and you're good to go uh, so look at the rest of the information and let's see so we're up on that we're configured with DHCP, that's fine, that's good. Modems, don't worry about that. Don't do proxies. If you have a proxy on here, get rid of it, please. Uh, proxies can cause a lot of problems in any machine if they are misconfigured. Either way, everything looks good right here, so I'm going to go ahead and click Next. Okay, now that that's finished with, um, we do want to test this connection, so just click yes and next, and it's going to go ahead and test that connection for us, make sure it's working. If everything is working, it's going to download these release note files, so the latest ones, and uh, we can also review those when it's finished. So it was success. Next. That's here. We can run an online update if you would like. And I'm going to go ahead and run the update. So, run update. You can also skip the update if you want. Okay, so here's the changes. We can revert it if it becomes a problem, of course. Uh, we'll just close this when we're done. I'll apply. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. All right, like I said, this is going to take a pretty good while, so I'll just pause it again. Okay, so I went ahead and just did all the updates, ran through this at another time, so oh, here we are, and just click Next. I'll say, hey, it needs to be restarted, just click OK. And here we go. If you want to speed that up, uh, you know, just push enter, and then you won't have to wait the 5 to 10 seconds that they require if you don't push anything. All right, and here are the release notes that uh, I mentioned before. After you download those, you can look over the newest updated release uh, release notes here. See all the changes that they made from the last one, what things are going on. 
uh, either way. I'm not going to review that myself, just next. Okay, now I don't have any printers installed. I have a sound card installed, that's fine. Uh, we're not going to do any printer installations right now through this. We will do that at a later time in the course. So there, there's actually quite a bit that we'll talk about with, uh, with printers. And if all is uh, according to plan, then you'll also learn how to build a print server in Linux, along with some other types of servers that you could host for, for free, as opposed to paying for the Microsoft version or anybody else. All right, so it says, hey, congratulations, you have completed your installation. Just go ahead and click finish here. And it'll reboot again. Notice this time it is going a lot faster because the updates aren't, uh, you know, installing themselves, getting set up, configuring, pushing out the old stuff. If you looked in the, the messages before, like uh, right here, uh, underneath starting LSB, it says started purge old kernels. There was a lot of that going on in the last updates. So we'll just wait for this to go and we should be good to log in. All right, and here we are, Tux Penguin. I can click on that, type in the password M3LINUX273, and sign in. And here we are. Welcome to OpenSUSE 13.1. If you've gotten to this screen, if you have successfully installed OpenSUSE 13.1 within your VMware, or if you're doing it on an, uh, your full computer into that. So congratulations if you did, and please, please, please take some time to uh, play around with it. There's a lot of different things that we can do. Uh, you know, the dashboard looks a little bit different than other uh, distributions of OpenSUSE that I've had experience with. There's the activities over here. There we go. Uh, so you have your mail. Firefox works all the same as uh, any, any browser, like any operating system, it will all work the same. You have LibreOffice Writer. Uh, so the competitor to Microsoft Office. Uh, and remember, you know, even if it's just, like, just browse through this, look at the way that things are set up. Um, if you want to start getting into configuring, please, please, by all means, feel free to do so. There's a lot of resources available. And again, the book is LPIC1 CompTIA Linux Plus Certification by Rob Tracy. Uh, the ISBN is 978-0-07. 1771573. It's a very inexpensive book. I wanted to keep it cheap for all you guys. It only cost $50. And hey, if you want to install Linux, you get it all installed, and the only thing you want to do is play Frozen Bubble, please, by all means, uh, just try it out. The part of learning Linux is playing with it. All right. Well, this concludes your installation. Congratulations. And if there are any questions for this, uh, if there are any questions about the installation, please, please, uh, just put something in the comments. Send me a message. I'll answer everything that I can. If you want a video on the installation for VMware, if you want an installation of CD Burner XP, please let me know. Those are very uh, easy things I could create a video for you. Um, so, again, if you have any questions about the installation, class times, how to register, where to go to register, please uh, do so. It's Anthony Radzikavage, and you have a wonderful day.